a good place to get your little piggy toes dipped in the conspiratorial abyss would be, you know, watch the interview that uh, Aaron Russo did with Alex Jones, um, where he talks about uh, his meeting with Nicholas Rockefeller uh, before 9-11, where he mentions, you know, there, there's going to be an event. I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew, and um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. And after this event, we would go to Afghanistan and secure the uh, the Caspian Sea oil. And out of that event, uh, we would invade Afghanistan. The United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps. A missile barrage lands on Afghanistan. It's a run uh, pipeline from the Caspian Sea. The oil pipeline that was planned, the best security for that was an occupation of Afghanistan. We just pulled out here uh, yesterday just to uh, come out and help protect the oil line. In a tank? In a tank. Then we were gonna invade Iraq. We were gonna invade Iraq. In the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq. The attack came in waves, cruise missiles, followed by the F-117 stealth bombers. It had been planned for months. And now, one day after that first airstrike, the Pentagon's shock and awe campaign was underway. The idea to blitz the capital with bombs, to stun the Iraqis into a quick surrender. This is the beginning of the shock and awe campaign. According to one official, this is going to be the entire nine yards. It was a breathtaking display of firepower. And the Pentagon says, we ain't seen nothing yet. Then we would establish a permanent military footprint in the Middle East. Take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East. We have Kuwait, we have Fifth Fleet in Bahrain. We have a nice base in Qatar, but it's a little too far south. And what do we have? We have four bases in Iraq. Beautiful bases. We can hit Syria, we can hit Iran, we can keep tabs on Afghanistan. There's all kinds of things we can do from those bases. We're going to make all of that a part of the, the New World Order. And make it all part of the New World Order. Our fifth objective, a New World Order can emerge. The New World Order. We needed a New World Order. A New World Order. New World Order. Build a New World Order. Novus Order Seclorum. A New Order. For the centuries, for the ages. About a new world order. The new world order is another step towards the global management of our planet. The creation of a new uh, 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 world order, financial world order. When really a new world order can be created, it's a great opportunity. Uh, a new world order. Creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. And a new world order. Let us reorder this world around us. Calling for a new world order. What does a new world order mean for countries like ours? When we are successful, and we will be. Soldiers will be looking in caves in Afghanistan and Pakistan trying to find these terrorists. He was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, there's no real enemy. It's a, it's a war on an idea. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, uh, which is no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax. The fear generated by 9-11, the fear of terrorist networks, has to be transferred to Iraq. That is, the American people have to learn to be as afraid of Saddam Hussein as they are of Osama bin Laden. They concentrated on, on preparing this storyline. It's day four of the Bush team's full court press, giving speech after speech after speech. It was clear that Iraq did not have a nuclear weapons program, but over and over again, President Bush, Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld, particularly Vice President Cheney, but also National Security Advisor Condi Rice, drummed up the idea of a reconstituted nuclear capability. With weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass death. He's resumed his efforts to acquire nuclear weapons. Develop nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Someone is waiting for a so-called smoking gun. We don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. 
the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. When there is a smoking gun or a mushroom cloud, we have waited too long. We cannot wait for the smoking gun. The gun smokes only after it is fired. A gun smokes after it's been fired. That smoking gun would be a smoking city. And the smoke of a nuclear blast would mean that we are too late. The threat posed by Iraq grows with each passing day. Danger that grows every day. Each day that goes by, he becomes more dangerous, more diabolical. Every day, Saddam Hussein grows stronger. His capabilities become better. Every day, Saddam Hussein builds more chemical and biological weapons. The longer we wait, the more dangerous he becomes. It was clear that Iraq did not have a nuclear weapons program. Iraq has never had the capability to do that. They didn't have it in the first Gulf War. They didn't have it in this uh, war in Iraq and they don't have it uh, in any way of getting it in the future. Iraq had to be invaded because it was the first step in going toward American empire. The major reason to take Iraq was a display of imperial power. But to show Europe and the Far Eastern Bloc, China and the Koreans, who was master. To make it so apparent and so overwhelming at the very outset of potential military operations that the adversary quickly realizes that, that there is no real alternative here other than to, to fight and die or to give up. What will follow will not be a repeat of any other conflict. It will be a f of a force and scope and scale that has been beyond what has been seen before. I want to know what you're going to do for us. What am I going to do for you? First thing I'm going to do for you is I'm going to upgrade your software, and then right at the second, I think I should slap him. Talking about firepower. Were well, you talking to the right guy? Bombs on target, real time battle management. That's what we're about, and that's what we are able to uh, deliver. He talks about you know how the the war on terror is a joke. He says, There's going to be war on terror, and he's laughing. There's no <laughs> who are we fighting? I mean, why do you think 9/11 happened? And then nothing's happened since then. Yeah, there's a war going on in Iraq, because so we invaded Iraq. And people are over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, that's a joke. We must stop the terror. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> The American death toll has reached at least 4,000, leaving pools of blood on neighborhood streets. Nope, no weapons over there. I keep asking the questions of why and how. Does this incident even have a purpose? The war on terror, is, you can't distinguish between Al-Qaeda and Saddam when you talk about the war on terror. Any country on the face of the earth with an active intelligence program knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south and north. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. Who have said in the past that it was, quote, pretty well confirmed. No, I never said that. Okay. I, I never think said that, that is... No, it's absolutely not. What I said was, uh, it's been pretty well confirmed. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. The interesting thing to me about the pre-war intelligence is clearly it was wrong. Every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. No one in our circles knew uh, that there were doubts and suspicions that this might be a forgery. Yes, the answer to the question, Madam Secretary, is that in fact there were contrary reports. No one in our circles knew uh, that there were doubts and suspicions that this might be a forgery. This one here was an unclassified version, so you're wrong. No one in our circles knew uh, that there were doubts and suspicions that this might be a forgery. Sixteen U.S. intelligence agencies in this previously classified document, including the CIA, all said unanimously that Hussein was not an imminent threat to the security of this country. Yeah, he talked about um, how the end goal was to get everybody chipped. I said, what, what's the point of all this? You have all the money in the world you need. You have all the power you need. What's the point? You know, what's the end goal? 
And he said the end goal is to get everybody chipped. The latest office innovation is a microchip implanted in the skin. This is the first American company to ever try this. So what are they tracking? And would you say yes if your boss asked you to do the same? Yeah, I would, I would do it. You will be chipped, it's just a matter of time. Using public transport, getting access to buildings and paying for coffee is now as simple as a touch of your hand. Thanks to some special implants. Here's an x-ray of her hands. Hannah's getting an electronic chip implanted into her hand. Three Square Market announced its plans to install rice-sized microchips in its employees. I mean, you talked about, you know, how they want to, you know, control the world. You know, this this whole idea of the bankers and the elite want to rule the world to convince everybody that, you know, socialism is capitalism. To control the whole society. To have the, to have the bankers, the, the elite people, you know, the bankers and some government controlling the world. Most of them believe they're doing the right thing. Or you make this progression from, you know, uh, democracy to democratic republic to um, democratic socialism. A lot of them believe it's better, it's better off being socialistic. You know, we have to convince people that, that socialism is really capitalism. You've heard the phrase a lot lately, democratic socialist. So what is democratic socialism? What is democratic socialism? What is that? What is democratic socialism? Democratic socialism is your kid's public school. I grew up in Canada, okay? We have right. socialized medicine. So this is where you scream, but he's a socialist! It's suddenly very common on the left. Bernie Sanders has called himself a democratic socialist. Democratic socialism to socialism to communism to uh, totalitarianism. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And that the whole agenda is to create a, a world government. The whole agenda is to create a one world government. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me uh, to speak at this impressive gathering for the World Government Summit. You know, the next step would be to move to a cashless society, moving all monies and, you know, to a microchip system. Where everybody has an, R R an RFID chip implanted in them, right? There'll be no more cash. Paying without cash is fast becoming the norm. When I think about it, I pay more without cash than with. Total integration of all information. If you just turn off your chip and you have nothing, you can't buy food. Um, total subjugation of all human populations. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what Everything, you everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one world government controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave, you become a serf to these people. That's their goal, that's their intention.